This video will teach you how to use Node.js, Festify.js and HarperDB to build a course management REST API. This API will help you keep track of the courses you are doing and the courses you plan to do. Therefore, without further ado, let's jump straight in. Recently, I took a break from the databases I usually use to play around with HarperDB. HarperDB is a distributed database with NoSQL and SQL capabilities. The most fascinating thing about HarperDB is that you perform all the CRUD database operations using only one endpoint. In my case, this is the endpoint I use to perform all the CRUD operations. Other notable features of HarperDB are that you can execute SQL queries on JSON data, that it removes the need for an ORM by returning the results as JSON arrays and the ability to insert data via JSON, CSV or using SQL. Doesn't that look interesting? The first step of the tutorial is to set up the folder structure of the application. So let's create a new folder called course management and let's open it. Now the next step is to initialize the project. We can do so by writing npm in it y and the y flag generates the package.json file this one automatically without you having to answer the usual questions about the project name, the description and so on. It automatically fills the fields with the default values. Now the next step is to install the packages needed to build the application. So let's clear the terminal and let's run npm install festify harperive.env and let's save them. Festify is a new Node.js web framework and it claims to be the fastest web framework in town. Harperive is the Node.js driver for HarperDB and Leslie.env is a module that loads environment variables into your application. Now we can move further and configure the Festify server. However, before we do that, we have to create two additional files. So let's clear the terminal and let's run touch app.js and then touch.env. Now we can open the application in the code editor and start writing code. So let's write code which opens the current directory in VS Code. Let's go to app.js and let's import Festify at the top of the file. Let's write const app require festify and then let's enable the logger as well let's add a semicolon now let's require dot env as well so we can use the environment variables and now let's create a dummy route to make sure the server works so let's write app get and then slash then we have request response an arrow function and then we respond with a simple json message so message hello world let's save it and let's add semicolons and we also need to listen to a port so people can access the application so let's write app.listen process env port which means that we take the port number from this file from the .env file and then we have another error function error address and if we have an error we log that error and we pass the error and we also exit the application otherwise we log to the console that the server is running and the port on which the server is running so app log info and then let's write something such as your server is listening on port process env port let's save it and now it's important to go into the .env file and define the port. So let's use a dummy port like 1111. Let's save it. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's clear it and let's run node. And you can see that the server is running on port 111. Now if we go to Google Chrome and we open the application, you can see that you get the JSON message hello world when you access this dummy route. So far so good because the application works. Now let's add the fields we will need to configure the database. We have four fields and they are as follows. Instance, URL, 
and this will be the URL of our Harper DB. And then we have instance username and then instance password and less lastly instance schema. Let's save it and we will fill it later. The next step is to create and configure the database. So let's create a new account on Harper DB. Let's open the website. Let's make it bigger and let's sign up for free. My first name is Catalin. My last name is and then let's use an email such as me cp at catalins.tech for the subdomain we can use catalins tech we don't have a coupon and we click on sign up for free and now we wait for the account to create now we need to add an account password i'm not going to tell you which one is it and now it loads the instances the next step is to create a new harper db cloud instance which we can do by clicking on this plus and then we want an instance in the harper db cloud for example we don't want this user installed instance because it means we have to host it ourselves and to take care of everything so let's click on this one create harper db cloud instance let's choose a name for our database for example db which will be as follows db catalin stack dot harper db cloud dot com let's add the username and the password and then we choose the free options half a gig is more than sufficient the storage size is sufficient as well and now we are ready to confirm the instance details once again you can see the details here we will need these details to configure the database in our application now let's click on agree and let's click on add instance and now we wait for the instance to load. Now the Harper DB Cloud instance is ready, but we don't have any schemas or tables at the moment. Therefore, we need to create a schema. To do so, let's click on this instance and then let's create a schema, which in this case is course management. Let's save it. And now we need to create a table. For the moment, we only set up a table called courses and then we provide the ID. The hash attribute is used to uniquely identify each record. In simpler words, the hash attribute is the ID which is unique for each record. So let's click on the green check mark to save it. Now let's go back to instances. Let's copy this link because we need it. And let's go to the application. Let's add it here as the URL. And then the username is admin. The password is one, two, three, four, and the schema is course management. Let's check it one more time. And yeah, it's course management and we are set. So these are the details we need to use the newly created Harper DB instance. Now we need to create some additional folders. So let's close the application and let's clear the terminal and let's create a new directory called source. Inside, let's create a new directory called database and lastly let's create a file inside the database folder called database config.js the database config.js stores the configuration for the database and you might ask why do i mean by that we just added the details in this file database config.js we will create the database instance so we can perform the CRUD operations let's go back to the project and let's open the database config .js. Now the first step is to import Harperive. So const Harperive require Harperive and then the client. And now we create an object with the database configuration. So const db config harper host, which is the instance URL, instance URL, and then the username, which which is process.env.instance username and then we have the password which is process.env.instance password and then we have the schema which is process.env.instance schema let's save it and then we need to create a new client as follows const client new harperive and then we pass the database configuration lastly we export the client so we can use it in the application so basically here 
you configure the database with the details you edit in this file called .env. Alternatively, you could have added all the information here, but it's not advisable to use sensitive information in the open like that. So let's save it. Now, the next step is to configure the application endpoints and we have to create some new folders again. So inside source, let's create a folder called controllers and then let's create another folder called routes. And then we need to create two new JavaScript files in the newly created folders. So let's create touch src routes course.js and then touch src controllers course controller js. We'll start by creating the routes first. So let's go to the routes file and let's close everything. And at the top of the file, we import the course controller, even though we don't have any controllers yet. So let's do just that. Course controller require controllers course controller. And now we have to create an asynchronous function called routes, which takes the Festify app instance and some options. And we have to export this function module export routes. So let's go back over it. We import the controllers, which we will use for the routes. Then we create the routes function and then we export this function. In this method, you configure the endpoints of, of your application. For each route, you have to specify the HTTP method, the URL and the handler at minimum. With that being said, let's build the first route and you can see how it's done. So app route and then we pass an object and then we pass the method which is the http method in this case it's get then the url which is slash courses and then the handler which is course controller get courses and we save it and now if we would have this controller we could access this route However, it's important to know that in this handler function, you could write the business logic. There is not necessary to create a controller, but I did it to keep the code more organized and a little bit better. You build all the other endpoints in a similar fashion. So now let's create the route to get a specific course, app.route, method, get, URL, slash courses, slash ID, and then the handler, which is course, controller, get, course now we create the route to add new courses so app.route the method is post the url is slash courses the handler is course controller add course now the next route is to edit a course so app.route method is and then the url is slash courses slash id and the handler is course controller edit course and lastly we have to create a route to delete courses so app dot route method delete url is slash courses slash id and the handler is course controller delete course so we have all the routes like i previously said for each route you need at minimum the http method the url and the handler or the business logic or what happens when the user accesses that route so for example when the users makes a get request to slash courses this function will be triggered and also each route or endpoint has a specific controller but at the moment they are just placeholders because there are no controllers that means if we try to access any of this route, they won't work. But that changes in the next step because we'll build the application logic after that. But before going further, we have to open the app.js file and register the routes. First of all, let's remove this dummy route because we don't need it anymore. And let's app.register require and then dot slash src routes course. And the reason why we did this is for the routes to be available in the application and to work. If we don't register these routes, the users won't be able to access them. 
This line makes the routes available in your application. The reason is that the Festify.js has a plugin architecture and this is how it works. Now the next step is to build the application logic with HarperDB. So let's open the course controller file and first of all we have to import the HarperIve client. So let's write const client require and then dot dot slash database database config and let's save it. Now this is where the fun begins. To portray the capabilities of HarperDB, you'll use both SQL and NoSQL operations to manipulate data. The first route we will build is the get route. So let's write const get courses is an async function, request response, arrow function, and then const all courses await client query, and then we write the SQL statement select everything from course management courses and this should return all the courses but now we have to return it so res send all courses so this is the database client and this method query allows us to run SQL queries this query selects everything from the database or from the table and returns it back also we need to export these controllers so they can be accessed in the routes folder so module export get courses but before we can test the application we have to create some dummy controllers for the other routes otherwise it won't work so we can simply copy this one and just duplicate it and we'll change the business logic later so let's do delete course let's add it here as well and then we have edit course let's add it here as well and let's add them here all of them add course get course okay we exported them and we have to make sure we don't have any typos edit course and then we have add course and then get course basically they all do the same right now but we will change that later let's go and try to run the application and you can see that it's listening on port 111. Let's go to the browser and let's try to access the courses route. And this is the message we get from the database. So the JSON is not formatted, but it returns all the courses. And you can see the status code 200. It was a success. And it tells what the operation was. In this case, it was SQL. And if we would had data, it would have been here. So the next step is to build the post route so we can add some courses and play around with the database. So let's write try and let's create a new constant called new course. Let's await client insert. We have to specify the table, which in our case is courses. And then we have to specify the records we want to add in the database. It's important to note that the records field is an array of objects that means you can add multiple courses in one go however for the purpose of this tutorial we only add one course so the name of the course we get that from the request body and then we have the description we get that from the request body description and then we have the author we get that from the same place and then we have the link which we can get from the same place as well and now we have to add a catch as well so if we have an error we send back the error also let's not forget to send back the new course so let's reply with the new course and we can test the application straight away let's restart it and let's go back into vs code let's open the thunder client and let's make a post request so we need to make this a little bit smaller http localhost 111 then we need a post request we go into the body we have a json we have a name field which is um, festify plus harper db course and then let's add a description a course that teaches you how to use these two technologies and the author is Kathleen Pitt and let's let's and let's add the link link 
catalins.tech and let's make the request and see what happens. Of course, we didn't make the request to the correct route, so let's add slash courses and let's do it now. You can see that the record was added successfully. You get the status code 200, you get the status, which is a success, you get the operation, which in this case is insert, and the data. Now we can check the application by making a get request to see if we can get the course, the courses, and you can see that now it returns the newly created course in the data field. Or we can go into the browser and you can see it here. It doesn't look that good because the JSON is not formatted, but here is the data. We have created time, the ID, description, the name, the author and the link. So, so far so good. Now let's implement the route that allows us to get a specific course. And the nice thing is that we just have to slightly modify this. So it's very similar to the get courses route. We just have to change this name to course and here as well. We need to add back ticks and now we need to add the where clause where the ID matches the ID passed in the URL. So rec params ID. So select everything from the course management schema dot courses table where the ID is the ID specified in the URL. Let's try and test this. First of all, let's save it. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's clear it. Let's run the application and let's see what happens when, it, when we copy this ID. Let's go to courses slash ID. And you can see that it returns only this course. You can see course, status code, status, operation, and the data. And to see it better, we will make the same request here in the Thunder client. So you can see it returned only this course. Now what's left is to build the edit and delete route. But before going further, it's important to specify where you can get the ID of the course. You can either make a get request to the courses path and you can see that it returns the ID. You can copy it from here or you can go into the Harper DB Studio and look at the records. So you can go into this record. This is the one we just created it. So you can see it in the dashboard here. And if you click on it, you can see that it specify the ID and the value of ID. So the hash attribute for this table is ID and has a value of blah, blah, blah. And it's also hidden from here. So these are the two ways of doing it. You can either come here into the database to get the ID from here, or you can just make a get request to the courses uh, route and you can see the ID as well. Updating a course is very similar to adding a course. The only thing that differs is this client method. This one will be update. So let's build the method as well. So try const edit course await client update and then we pass the following object. We specify the table which is courses again and then we have the records array which is an array of objects. Let's pass the ID. It's very important that you pass the ID. If you don't pass the ID then it won't know which record to update. So it's very important you don't miss this field. And then the other stuff is the same as here. So I'll just copy paste it. And then we have to return this new course. So res send edit course. Let's change it here as well. And then if we have an error, let's catch it. Catch error. And let's reply back with that error. Let's save it and we can try it again. Let's close the server, let's clear the terminal and let's run the application. Let's make a put request in the Thunder client in VS Code. But first we need the ID. Now let's choose the HTTP method which is put and let's just change this to something random. Let's click on send and you can see that it successfully updated the record. Let's go into the database dashboard and let's see if it changed. You can see that the name of the course is this random string. So it definitely worked. You can see it here as well. Also, you can make a get request to the courses route. So let's do that. 
and you can see the name is changed. Now let's build the route that allows us to delete courses. First of all, let's change the name to deleted course and then let's remove select and the star and let's write delete. We also need the where clause again where the ID is the ID provided in the URL. So here is how it looks. We also need the backticks. So let's change that to backticks. Let's save it. Let's restart the application. Let's go back to the Thunder client. Let's make a get request to get the ID. Here is the ID. Let's copy it and let's make a delete request to this one. And you can see that it was a success. One of one record successfully deleted. If we make a get request again, let's delete this. And you can see that we have no data or no records anymore. And it's also visible in the Harper DB Studio. Let's refresh it. And you can see we have no records. So that's it. That's how you build a simple REST API with Harper DB and Festify. The thing I enjoy the most about Harper DB is that you can run SQL queries and also no SQL. So here for these routes for get courses, get course and delete course, we used SQL queries. You can see how simple it is here. And also to add courses and to edit courses, we used no SQL. It's super, super awesome. Also, Harper DB has other useful features such as using a single endpoint. If you go into .env file, you can see that we have only one endpoint. It removes the need for an ORM by returning the results as JSON arrays and the ability to insert data via JSON, CSV or SQL. That's all.